Hey everybody, we're going to do a quick video on composting um, and how I do it and how I recommend other people do it um, and specifically uh, using kitchen compost, kitchen scraps. Um, so it all starts here. It starts with the indoor kitchen bin that you can uh, basically just throw stuff in as you use it. I've got some avocado skins, some eggshells, um, and you know it fills up pretty quick. You know, Even though there's only two people living here, uh, we go through a lot of produce and there's a lot of food scraps. So what I usually do is I take the whole bin, let's take the lid off here, um, and I bring it outside, which is the next step of the, the whole composting process. All right, right outside my kitchen door is the outdoor bin. Um, and basically this is just a brute uh, 55, no, it's not 55 gallons, probably about half that size. Um, and it's a really well-made, very solid uh, garbage can. Um, and I don't let this fill up because it would take, you know, it'd be really heavy in it to, to carry. So if we open it up here, um, you can see I've got like some lentils and some bananas, banana peels and that sort of thing. I let it get up around a third of the way and then I'll take it out um, to the actual compost pile. But one thing to note here, what I've done, uh, I don't know if you can tell if the video is going to pick it up, but there are holes drilled in. I think I used, I'm not sure, it's a pretty small, small bit, but you can really use any size bit you want because these things will hold up even with a bunch of holes drilled in. And I even got them on the bottom. It's hard to see, I know. Um, and I've got them all the way around. I just, I didn't drill any in the top because I don't want any water to get in. But the point of this is to allow air which is really important because if you don't drill the holes, what happens is the kitchen scraps have a lot of water and they actually just rot before they can even compost. And you get really bad smells and you get bugs. So it's, it's, it's a pretty much a bad, uh, bad situation. So the holes are really important. Um, so I'm gonna, usually I would take this out, but it's not quite full yet. So we're just gonna pretend I'm taking it out and show you the next step of the process. So this is uh, the last stage of the composting process, which is the outdoor vermicomposting bin. And, and you could use just re a regular compost pile, but um, I actually have mine with red wigglers, which I've done a lot of videos about. I got it covered up here with a shower curtain just to kind of keep um, birds and cats and stuff from, from digging around in it. So we take off the rock and lift it up. This is where, where it gets good. It turns into just that kind of worm castings, uh, compost. It's not totally broken down here um, and uh, one thing I could probably do better is creating multiple piles of different levels of finished compost because uh, so, this has still has some skins in it and it also has completely finished worm castings so it's a lot harder to harvest from but that's okay it's still all good as long as it doesn't go anaerobic as long as it doesn't start smelling um, the good compost the worm castings will still remain very viable um, so this probably needs a little bit more time before I spread it out on my beds. I'll probably just wait till the springtime and then spread all of this around. Um, but what I basically do is I um, turn the compost pile and add to it as I turn it. So, <clears throat> so if it's right here, I'll usually um, put down, you know, a couple shovelfuls of compost, pour all the food scraps on top, and then put the rest of the compost pile back on top of it. Um, and that helps with speeding up decomposition and I know you want, what you might be thinking which is that it, it will also heat it up um, but the thing to remember is that uh, in the winter time it's so cold here at least that the heat actually lets the worms survive and oh, I don't know if you saw the worms but they're all in there digging around especially um, near the areas where there's food, food scraps and there's pill bugs and all sorts of other insects that are helping with the decomp process um, you'll see I, I leave everything in a hole, um, eggshells, skins, I don't really worry about cutting things up and, and making it really small, which will, which will speed up decomposition. Oh, the other thing, I've collected a lot of shredded um, tree leaves over here from my neighbors who were kind enough to pre-shred a lot of this, um, and I mix that in probably about three parts um, leaves, three to four parts leaves and to one part. Uh, kitchen scraps and really you can err on the side of too many leaves. That's probably better than erring on the side of um, Oh, there's got some mushrooms growing on here um, On the side of too much Kitchen scraps because the kitchen scraps will ruin the compost making it go anaerobic, but too many leaves will just slow it down So that's totally fine to put a lot more leaves than you you think just as an insurance policy But yeah, those are really important. I almost forgot to talk about those um, and then once this is all done, I take it and I spread it on my forest garden area and my annual beds. 
and uh, the plants really love it. I don't worry about whether or not the red wigglers get um, spread out as well. I mean, it means I'm losing some from my composting area, but you know, they're probably going to be fine out there as well because there's a lot of organic matter for them to eat. So that's how the composting process works here. There's three stages. Um, try it out for yourself and see what you think.